Hello everybody and welcome to the Mega Modded series. I'm here again Help with Help. what? Help you. Help <laughs> I'm Help here me. again with Never Named, of course. He's got me. He's kidnapped I've... me. Help and me. I've got I've got him for two two episodes. I've, I've kidnapped me. him. For for the Christmas break while I go home, I wanted to backlog some videos and He's got me chained to the dungeon <laughs> wall and it's not even for anything sexy. <laughs> Trust me, it'll get sexy. Oh god. We'll get that. Um, yeah, so hopefully nothing breaks. I'm... I get a perverse sexual pl pleasure from breaking your game, uh, breaking your mods and watching you squirm. <clears throat> we got the unpredictable no bullets. Oh, those are pretty interesting. <laughs> and the Glock 42 as well. Glock 42 is pretty generic. Unpredictable it's is oh God. a wild one. <laughs> it very much is. What a great starting item. I believe Unpredictable it's can... It modifies each bullet stat anywhere between 10% um, to 200% of the original. Oh and I'm guessing the so, stat... It, it seems like bullet speed, bullet size, bullet damage and spread are all the things that it changes. It doesn't range change too. spread at all, actually. Oh, this, this one just has bad spread. Yeah. It changes... Uh, it changes those stats, and it also changes knockback... Ooh, okay. ...boss damage... ...and jammed damage. Ah, nice. This is intriguing. Oh my god, that tiny little bullet. Does it... Can it kill some, sometimes add piercing? Or was that bullet just so small that it passed right through him? I think it was so small that it just missed. It doesn't add piercing. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is definitely an interesting one to start with. I'm looking forward to getting a few different guns. God damn, the cer certain bullets you fire just have the worst range. <laughs> I seem to be getting kind of unlucky with the range modifiers here and there. It can be anywhere between... So, yeah, like 10% to 200%. So you could either have, like... Like... <sighs> A, a 0 0.1 multiplier on your damage, or a two times multiplier. Oh, what the on your fuck? Damage. Where did you come from? God damn, that's good. that's corner, gonna be kind of yeah. crazy. I did not see him there. I like it though. This is a really cool item. I've not had it before, oh, so thanks. I very it much took like it. Me, way too long to make for what it was. Oh, that's no, great. I, I love items like this that add a lot of like randomness and unpredictability. I'm surprised you made something like this because this is the sort of item that you'd hate, isn't it? Sort of item that I'd be ambivalent towards. Yeah, I, I I love these sort of things. I think they're so wacky and just fun. But I think we've got a rather big talking point to go over that will uh oh my god that will be all will be revealed soon. But me and Never named oh I like that a curse. Do you know what I'm that, gonna take some curse? That, that was my <laughs> suggestion to Bunny, and I'm so glad he implemented it. It's really cool, yeah. Mini shroom. Um, a poison mushroom that weakens burns and muscles of the engineer, shrinking them uh, to a mockery of their former size. I'm guessing this just makes me small. It does. <laughs> nice. Um, gives, oh, makes me small and gives me a speed up. I like this. This is I pretty remember, cool. Uh, I remember Round uh, Round King experimenting with uh, changing player size, but I didn't realize he'd actually done it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This. But yeah, I was going to say, there's a sort of Impressive. big thing, kind of big thing, coming soon that, that will be clearly revealed fairly shortly. Um, me and Never Named uh, played through Half-Life 1, and I'm going to be uploading it in a six-part series, sort of over the course of the Christmas period. And yeah. I'm and pretty excited to release it. Highlights. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited to uh, to release it. Actually, I hadn't played Half-Life before in, in any capacity, ne none of the games, and I also didn't even really know the story. Um, so it was all very new to me, um, and it was really fun. Apart from the clear 1990s game design fuckery, which is plentiful in that game. Um, oh, there's a warm mix somewhere. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, no, it's down here somewhere. Maybe it's a Mimic, actually. I can feel it. Regular Mimics aren't counted as enemies until they actually wake up. So it has to be a War Mimic somewhere, then. 
yeah, it would have to be a wall mimic, yes. Because a regular mimic in the code is just a chest that's been told to play its mimic idle animation. Yeah. Unless it somehow got hit by a bullet through a wall, which can't really happen. Yeah. Unpredictable, it doesn't add wall piercing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anything should. Seems like a bad idea. Although I am getting slower as I walk towards the chest. Maybe it's a wall mimic in the chest room. Oh, ha ha. <laughs> Extra unpredictability. Where the hell is Just it? Just walk it's... along the walls. Oh, uh, that's a good idea, yeah. Because it will wake up if you just walk you're, close You're to right, it. yeah. It feels like it's just down here. It's such a weird, like... It could be in the shop, to be honest. It's such a weird thing that, that, like, you, you can... you checked that top wall annoys me. Because I, I walked over near the top wall and it's, I, I stopped walking slowly. No, the, the, the middle top. Okay, good okay. boy. Yeah, it's so weird that you can, like feel wall mimics in this game because it slows down your movement speed because you're technically in combat. It's so funny. Yeah, right. it's it's an oversight, definitely, but I it's don't know, not like, an unwelcome. I, I genuinely have no idea where it is, though. Like, I'm, my movement speed's fine here. It slows down towards this wall. Well, there's two rooms in the shop that you haven't checked, and there's a room and the shop that you haven't checked. Yeah, but the movement speed in this room's fine. I, like, I don't get any of the movement speed down in this room. So it has to be closer over to that side. This is strange. To... Okay, hear me out. What if there's a secret room off that chest room? Possibly? Shall I try it out? Oh, very there you funny. Go. Someone made a secret room with a mimic in it. But it's a live mimic. And it's not going to drop anything because it's yeah. a live mimic. I can't really get in there and kill it either, so there's not much point to this, but... I'll do it for the challenge. I haven't fought a black chest mimic in a long while. There you go. <laughs> that was interesting. Well, you know, at least we solved the mystery. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, the brown chest's locked. Shouldn't be locked if it's but in it there. Is, it's a big it sad. is annoying. It is annoying to open up a secret room and just get a middle <laughs> finger shoved in your yeah. eye. God damn, this boss is so common. I get this boss on the first floor like almost all the time. Maybe there's something to do with uh, rarity tables and stuff that uh, Round hasn't considered. I don't know. Possibly. Round keeps asking me to uninstall the mod. <laughs> but I actually quite like this boss. It's like, it's a little weak and it's a little jank, but I actually quite like it. I think it's cool. It's fine. I'm definitely noticing every now and again a bullet's doing a lot more boss damage. Yeah, you just get like a bullet every now and again that just does huge damage to the boss. And some bullets do like pissing damage. <laughs> yeah. On earth. Is that a guitar? Violence. Violence. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell? This That's thing's a bizarre. strange sound for a violin to it, make. <laughs> it very much is. We're not was not expecting that. And a very strange way to hold a violin. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows they play the you violin by just holding it on the very, very bottom of the violin. <laughs> Yeah, you look like you're about to start fencing someone with a violin. <laughs> this is a pretty weird weapon. I kind of like it. So yeah, this one is still affected by unpredictable bullets, but it is, its yeah, shot but... speed is so high that a, a uh, even if it goes to the maximum reduction, it's not enough to really make a dent in the shot speed. Yeah. Remind me, what benefits can I get from the ring of oddly specific benefits? What are the, uh, okay, what are the, me... uh, things that I can get? I, I, isn't one of them, like, I get, like, extra stats if my money has a two in it or something? It increases damage, movement speed, uh, bullet speed, and re reload speed by 16% if you meet any one of the following criteria. If you have exactly four armor, 
If your amount of money ends in 4 or 8, if the first digit of the remaining amount of ammo in your current gun is 5, or if the play if your uh, curse and coolness match exactly and are not zero. Okay, I think I might buy that. What's this guy again? Uh, 50 50 chance to fully heal you or reduce you to half a heart. Okay, we don't need that at the minute, but that's pretty cool. That's one of those ones that if you're actually on low health, it's basically just positive. <laughs> <clears throat> one of those ones that you don't use unless you're like actually if you're in a dire situation yeah oh my god look how slow that one was <laughs> i like it i think it's cool i remember because i used it once when i was at full health and did nothing and i was like what the hell i didn't, I didn't realize what it did at the time so i was like hmm a bit confusing if, if, it sounds like the 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 volume of the sound when I shoot is maybe tied to the bullet size because sometimes it shoots and it's loud and sometimes it shoots and it's quiet. It's kind of strange. I don't know why that would be. That that's I didn't program anything like that. So I, I gotta say I wouldn't expect that to be the case, but that's kind of what it sounds like. Speaking of programming, I am taking a bit of a hiatus from dungeon modding until um, Glorfindel is able to figure out why. My mod has crashing issues with Gungeon Go Burr. Does it have crashing issues with Gungeon Go Burr? Yeah, on some, for some people, on some computers, for some unknown reason, there are crashing issues with Gungeon Go Burr in my mod. Hmm, that's annoying. I've, luckily, I've not been uh, exposed to that yet, which is weird, because my computer is normally the one that's cursed. Ooh, flak bullets. Interesting. <clears throat> Yeah, my computer's normally the one that's cursed with things like that. But that is very annoying, yeah. Oh my god, this is mental. But I yeah. can understand why that would want, you, want, want to make you take a break. But, but to be fair... Um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there another cursed pot in here? There is, there is, there is. Why? I can get my cares up to level 2 and then I've got 2 coolers and 2 cursed. That's I can go correct. buy the ring. Yeah. See, I got so the smarts. Be... Yeah, that's si si plus sixteen percent to a bunch of different stats. Ew, I like that a lot. It's actually like plus sixteen point three seven percent because I, I figured it's the ring of oddly specific benefits. Yeah, give it an it oddly specific an oddly... bonus. I like that. Eh. Okay. Right, let's go fight the boss. <laughs> yeah, that is a shame, but to be fair, you'll probably end up doing a bunch of Gungeon stuff in the background without coding it, though, won't you? Like, spriting and having ideas, because you normally end up doing that. Maybe. I've been sort of, uh, obsessed with inscription lately. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> yeah, just been drawing uh, custom cards because, <clears throat> oh dear lord, it's fun. I gotta say the art style, the art Wait, style yeah. is uh, is really cool. Like I said, uh, I think I think after Christmas that'll be like the next series that I play on my channel. I know it's a little bit after the hype of the game on YouTube, so I probably should have played it a bit earlier. But better late than never. Yeah, nobody give him inscription spoilers because he's managed to remain mostly unspoiled. Uh, like almost entirely. Like I I kind of know a very vague, very very vague. Um, spoiler about the ending, but it, it has no context for me right now. Like, I don't know anything about what it means or why or anything, so it, it really isn't a spoiler at all. Snape kills Dumbledore at the end of Inscription. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, do you know what? I'm gonna smelt some guns together. Ooh, that just gave me a really good idea. I know that you're taking hiatus from, from modding, but if anyone else wants to take this idea, now that NPCs are becoming a thing, make like a gun muncher that duct tapes two guns together. So I am, I have designs for a couple things actually inspired by inscription. Yeah. Because inscription allows the player to 
modify their cards, basically. If you yeah, get I've a seen, card I've seen, like, a certain... I've seen basic amount of gameplay from the very early game. I think I watched. Yeah. I think I watched Hooks play on the first video he did. So obviously it was the very, very first um, like section of the game. What does this do again? Uh, yeah, stat modifiers are applied twice. Wait, does that mean what I think it means for unpredictable? It's... I don't think it does actually, because unpredictable it's coded weird. But you know, we'll see. Actually, hold on, let me check how unpredictable it's is actually coded, because I forget. Also, the soul lantern plus this is going to be strange. But it, it does mean that the stat bonuses you get from the ring are being doubled for Ooh, that gun. Nice. I think this is a really cool idea for a gun. Really cool. Yeah, it's not even a particularly strong gun, but it doesn't have to be because it's a no, weak it's, but gun with I gotta great say, potential. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's one of those guns that you you like. It's kind of like when you get the R key. Um, not Arky, sorry, the, yeah, is it Arky? Yeah. Is it Arky? Isaac's got me confused. Is the gun called the Arky? The lowercase R. That's the one, the lowercase R. I was like, wait a minute, it's not called Arky, that's, that's surely wrong. Gunshin's got me confused, uh, Isaac's got me confused even. Um, it's like that. Every time you get it, you're like, eh, but it's got such powerful synergy potential that it's actually kind of quite a powerful and fun gun most of the time. I really like the soul lantern thing as well. This is good. So let's go to the items, passives, unpredictable it. I'm not quite sure what the uh, the soul effect, like the the status effect, is doing, but I'll take it. I think it's hurting them over time, maybe? I don't actually know. Hematic rounds. Are they yours? They look like they're yours. Hematic rounds are kind of bad, could be useful. Um, Ow. Every hit of damage you take in a room slightly increases your damage until the room ends. Only until the room ends, okay. If it was until the floor ends, I'd be snapping that shit up considering tweaking it because it is a little weak right now but it's not a priority especially with the hiatus yeah no to be fair i think i think um a, a gungeon modding hiatus will do you well anyways because like you've done a lot you need a what you need a break yeah it just it, it eats away at me the fact that my mod has these like crashing issues because like there's very little i can do about it yeah and you and it's, it, it, it's, it's just it's one of those things, isn't it, where you you can put all the work you want into a cool item, but if, like, a massive percent, percentage of the player base can never see it, it just feels pointless. Yeah, it, it does. It just feels pointless. Also, until you get rid of Casey, you've lost your, uh... Yes, I know. What's he doing? Okay, where... Now I've got 2.5 curse. What happened? Does the lantern give 0.5 curse or something? Probably, yeah. Uh, yes, it does. Hmm. F. That's very sad. Plus one bullets, hey. Plus one Pretty bullets, good. though. That's another one for the up and up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the up up is actually becoming quite a strong weapon right now. It's yeah, a shame so it doesn't have getting... 600 ammo, because then it would be getting the uh, the start, ammo stats with a 5 ben benefit for quite a long time. So yeah, um, I looked it up. Since, since Unpredictable, it modifies your... Uh, it doesn't modify your stats. Yeah, um, it doesn't actually and up work the same. Doesn't yeah. gain a benefit that makes, from that, it. That, that makes sense, to be fair. The up and up only works on stat modifiers yeah. because I, it was actually really easy to make. Yeah, I can imagine so. Yeah. I just went when the player fires, right? When the player creates a bullet, and this is in the base game. When the player creates a bullet, the bullet's stats are multiplied by the player's stats. Yeah. And I just made it so that 
for the up and up, that happens twice. Yeah, it just it just literally puts a times two on that. That's great. Yeah, that, that's a really simple way of making a really cool weapon. That's the, that's the thing I love about like Gungeon. It's, it is like it is it's, it's. I always say this about like mods, modded items in Isaac too. I always appreciate when people take a base game feature that is somewhat underutilized or maybe maybe not used to its fullest you know, potential or those, has those like really a... underutilized base game features stats no you know what i mean though like uh it, it takes something really basic and does something interesting with it i i always like those it's like um blazy her, her mod for um for binding of isaac i'm i'm thoroughly enjoying it i think it's it's a, it's quite a small mod at the minute but it, it's one of my favorite mod uh, modded item packs at the minute because her items are just all like basic but unique things like the electric dice is um pro probably my favorite item in modding literally that i've ever used and I, it probably it's probably not like the best to say this considering it's quite a basic item but I love it. Basically, it just makes it, it's, it's essentially a um, car battery, but with a gamble. Car battery, but random. Yeah. And I fucking love it. It's so fun. And it, it like, I, it, I've probably got a bias because car battery is one of my favorite items in the game already. Um, I just, I, I like the fact that it can, it can just change so many spacebar items and make them so much better. And it, it affects so many things and so much like, so many runs in so many different ways. I really enjoy that. Yes, but um, on the topic of the up and up, uh, so yeah, so if you look at your uh, damage stat, the up and up is multiplying, it, it, when it, the, you know, the base game, when you, you fire a bullet, its damage gets multiplied times 1.65. Yeah. Uh, 6.9. Why did I get a damage up while speaking to her then? Uh, your money must have gone to a number uh, that okay. uh, the ring accepted. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, if your uh, money ends in four or eight, it's a, an active. Honk. Yeah, you know, anyone who knows what that's from should be afraid. <laughs> Hong Kong. Fear the clown. God forgives. Honk mother does not. <laughs> right, let's uh, let's get in and fight the boss. Yeah. Because your money ends in, in four, you're getting that bonus, so you're almost at double damage right now. I know, that's really good, that. <laughs> really good. This is a, just a good run for stats. <laughs> Very good run for stats. And, uh, if you were to take the um, up and up out, it would get times... Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh my god, um, what happened then? Did you just die? That was a sneeze. <laughs> oh my god. My, uh, powerful sneezes run in my family. <laughs> we don't do the little... It's like when we sneeze, the world shakes. T to be fair, I'm very similar in that in that regard. I, anyways, I routinely um, scare people that I'm around when I sneeze. If you fire the up and up, it will get times 1.69 damage, and then it'll multiply times 1.69 damage again. Nice. It's very strong. Ah, uh, the hot glue gun. Hot glue gun's decent enough. It's very good utility. Yeah, it locks. It glues enemies in place. Yeah. And has a chance to set them on fire. I like it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm surprised no one else had made one, I'll be honest. Oh, your favourite. Oh my god, yeah. No, to be fair, it's been reworked, so I don't actually care anymore. I think it's, uh, I think it's absolutely fine now. I will say hot glue gun might not be the best with unpredictable bullets because <laughs> yeah, I know. hot glue gun hot glue gun works at its best when it's predictable. Oh, this is actually kind of cool because it fires out a barrage where every single one of them is different. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's that's wacky. I like that a lot. And then all of them flak shot too. One great thing about flak shot plus unpredictable bullets is flak. 
flak shot uh, triggers not only on hitting a wall or an enemy, but on uh, running out of range. Like if it's if it's a low range shot and it like expires, it um, splits. That works pretty well, doesn't it? Honk. I like how he runs backwards. <laughs> Honk. So are you familiar with what the uh, horn is a reference to? I am not. I, I just thought it was the dude horn from the skeleton meme. Oh, oh you poor, sweet summer <laughs> child. <laughs> the honk mother forgives you not. Um, so have you ever heard of Space Station 13? Nope, never. Tell me a it's tale. It's an old game. It's an old multiplayer roleplay game. That's, um been maintained through a bunch of uh, servers and stuff and because it's existed for so long and people on these servers can just add whatever they want using the game's engine to their own server mm. like a server owner could be like hmm, I really feel like adding this mechanic to my uh, Space Station 13 server and they just can so over the years it's existed it has gained an ungodly amount of depth. I think you briefly mentioned this to me when we were playing, um, I can't remember the name of the game now. It's the one where you're on the space station and you've got all the different survivors that come in. And you've got all like raid ships and stuff. What the hell's it called? You were really heat into signature. it. Yeah, Heat Signature. I think we were talking about this briefly when we played Heat Signature. Yeah, perhaps, that's likely because space reminds me of Space Station 13. Uh, I just like space. Um, I just like space. So, the game is actually really fun if you can stand the horrible fucking controls. Oh, right. <laughs> the, the game is old, and even though the content of the game has been updated with the times, like, the uh the controls they play like a turd rolling down a hill <laughs> oh no strange i don't know what that means neither do i anyways continue uh So, yeah, there is so much depth in the game after the years and years and years of independent development by a bunch of different people. I really love games like that where, like, they just have such a strong, small fan base that they end up becoming kind of like these huge games. I mean, to be honest, Enter the Gungeon, not in, not in that sense, but Enter the Gungeon through modding has started to become kind of like that. Like, years after the game's been, um, been sort of left by the developers, there's been more content added than there was in the base game, including flaws and bosses. So, I, I'd just like to point out, I, I have played, I've not played a, an ungodly amount of Space Station 13 because it does require, you know, a lot of time investment and dealing with the controls and it, a lot of the time... Is it mainly roleplay? Uh, you do have things that you need to do, and there are actual gameplay elements, but the fun comes from the roleplay aspect. Yeah, and we, we were definitely talking about this during Heat Signature, because I remember you telling me a, like, a story about when you played it once. So, like, if you choose the job of the botanist, your job on the station is to grow plants. Yeah. If you choose the chemist, your job is to mix up chemical mixtures for other departments when they request them. If you choose cargo, your job is to seal off the cargo bay and create an independent nation while keeping everyone out and ruling with an iron fist. <laughs> Although on paper, you're supposed to be, um... On paper, you're supposed to actually uh, just be supplying resources to others, but we all know what that means. <laughs> Is 
This girl is very if satisfying. You're in medical, if you're in medical, your job is to um, make it so that the other people on the station don't die. If you're in security, your job is to make it so that the other people on the station do die. <laughs> And it's all just these sort of classes interacting and doing this crazy shit. And there'll especially be a bunch of different um, things that just go down. My first game, I I entered the game, I arrived on a on a, um, a, a shuttle to a station. And the first thing I hear over the radio, and by that I mean I saw it in the text chat because yeah. old game, but the, the text chat is literally a radio. Ah, right. The, the text chat only portrays uh, text messages from people within hearing distance of you. Ah, that's pretty interesting. Unless they're using the radio and you're on the same frequency. That's actually really cool. Yeah, so, over the radio, uh, I hear someone ask, why is the clown 3D printing shotgun shells? <laughs> and in response, the clown responds in, like, giant font size, Comic Sans, pink, because I can, asshole! <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> From that I moment. I like the fact that the ship needs a clown. Oh yeah, the role of clown is to um, assist the uh, ship in being happy by playing practical jokes and pranks and... <laughs> 3D printing shotgun clown... chills. And clowns are single-handedly the greatest risk to personal safety in the entire Oh yeah, I, I, I'd imagine so. I can thoroughly because see why that would be the case. If you want to be a troll, the bet, like, because these servers, they do have moderation. You can't just go on and fuck shit just, up if you, you don't. You can't just say, I'm a clown, so I'm going to kill everyone because it's a jerk sort of thing, yeah. Like, if you, like, join on in, like, botany and you decide, I'm going to just start shooting people because I can, you're probably going to get banned because... Yeah. That doesn't it, make any sense. It yeah. ruins the experience, and it's not even like... But if you can make up a valid roleplay reason um, for why you're doing something... If you can excuse your actions via actual means, yeah. Then you can get away with it. And the best part of being a clown is that for a clown, most any, of the time, <laughs> a valid roleplay reason yeah. constitutes as, I thought it would be funny. <laughs> But yeah, if, if you're like so dangerous. If you're like a botanist and you end up wanting to kill someone, and you can be like, "Uh, he slept with my wife and like did all this, and that's your reasoning, and that's why you shot him," then then there's a good chance they'll be like, oh. "Okay, it makes sense." What was that guy flying? Not not really. Like it <clears throat> has to actually be something that happened in game before the events of the game. The characters you're playing they don't have any relation to each other. So you can't just make up some backstory ah, okay. to justify it. But if it was like, um, I accidentally exposed him to a dangerous virus in my work in virology, so I had to throw him out the airlock, officer. <laughs> uh, that might pop us. And of course, everyone um, follows this sort of hidden code of conduct where you are supposed to not do, just do weird things, because you can, but at the same time, rules only exist if you don't get caught. Yes, yeah. There's gonna be people and out there that are basically, sort of like, that. murderers, and do whatever they want, but as long as they do it sneakily. Uh, some servers even have entire, like, classes for like criminal people whose job it is to just, to just fuck shit up as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have pretty this much was years before factions. Among Us. Yeah. <laughs> so, one time, uh, 
I was playing with someone and he was just sort of showing me the ropes and he wanted to play chemist. So he's like, I'll be a chemist. I know how the chemistry system works in this game. Uh, you don't because it's just complicated enough where if you learn it, you may actually have a chance at going into real chemistry. <laughs> Goddamn. Because it's had years to be developed. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. of course, the chemistry is going to be ungodly complex. But at the same time, that means you can make just about anything. Yeah, you can actually do some really cool shit with it if you know how it works sort of thing, yeah. So he was like, okay, I'm going to be the chemist, you're going to be my assistant. We Our job is to fulfill chemistry orders from other departments, and also I'm going to make meth. <laughs> nice. So people would, like, come to the window and be like, hey, I need this <laughs> chemical for a job I'm doing, and it's like, uh... No, I'm sorry, we don't have that in stock, and just shut the window. It sounds like you're just making meth with it. <laughs> and, like, he did occasionally give, like... He, t he did occasionally give out, uh, simple chemicals, like, the janitor came by asking for cleaning solution, and so he gave it to him. But he did turn the janitor down when the janitor came by asking, Hey, do you have, like, acid? Like, a actual, not the drug, a actual <laughs> yeah, acid. Yeah. It's like, fuck off, mate. <laughs> and the janitor started being all... He started being all creepy and lurking by the window and hissing <laughs> at us. <laughs> and, um... So, yeah, he, uh, guy was making some meth, and he sent me off to... And I, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna just wander down to explore the, uh, the rest of the station. Because that was still pretty new. And so I decided to wander down into the medical wing. Holy shit. Oh, this is beautiful. This is why Scattershot is the best. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Does the status effect that it gets applied make enemies fly? It must I do. think it does, yeah. Why is that guy not dying? I don't think the projectiles that go through walls are actual, actually valid. Ah, froze for a moment there. Oh, I fucking hate this room! Yeah, so... <laughs> I was I was wandering down to the medical bay, just sort of checking things out, seeing what was going on. It was a slow day for the doctors, because nothing had really gone wrong yet. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, the station is rocked by a horrendous crash. Oh no. Everyone gets thrown to the floor. Emergency systems are blaring. The announcement reports a massive explosion from the chemistry department. <laughs> so, he overcooked the meth. And... Turned the entire chemistry wing into ash, <laughs> My God. leaving a giant hole in the station, and also taking out half the medical wing. <laughs> and he, was, he was the one showing you the ropes, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's amazing. He's like, here, let me show you how it's done. Immediately My fucking car destroys the ship. My character was heading back to chemistry at the time, so I got blasted back, and my leg got torn off in the explosion. Fucking hell. It got amazing. worse. There was a, a fire in the room I was in, so the fire doors closed. <laughs> I, had to, I had to manually initiate an override to get out of the burning room, carrying my leg with me. <laughs> I think I did manage to find a medic who could reattach it. Holy shit. This is, what is fucking this Ouroboros so shit? cool. <laughs> this is awesome. I am infinity. I'm Ouroboros. Now, I'm after seeing this, this, no bunny's going to make this like an actual gun, right? Yeah. Like a gun that works this way. And I hope he does because it's so cool. Yeah, this is why I love Scattershot. Every single time you get Scattershot with a new gun, it always produces some wacky cool effects. I, mean, I don't know Fla I don't know how big of a role Flackable is playing, but 
Black Bullets is creating this like star pattern everywhere that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's also creating the lag, I'll be honest. Yeah, I think it is too. I mean, everyone knows Black Bullets is fucky when it comes to modding. I don't think it's necessarily modding. I think Flak is just fucky when it comes to 10,000 bullets being created in one It's frame. actually created quite a lot of stuttering even when I'm not firing. I don't know if you can tell, but the game is stuttering a lot. No, I can see it, yeah. Oh, I, I tried to roll then, it just ate my input. <laughs> ah, yeah, the, uh... Bunny, Bunny is gonna love this. <laughs> The station is always a wild thing. I can imagine so. At another point, I was playing as, um... Uh, I, I was like, a lot of these jobs are really complicated. I don't know how the medical system works. I don't know how the chemistry system works. You've got to get into a really shitty role early. Like janitor or some crap. <laughs> Yeah, you have to sort of... You literally have to work your way up the ladder. Yeah, exactly. It's like a, Fortunately, it's like a real job sort of there thing. Is a, there is a role that's just called assistant, where your job is to just do whatever people tells you to do. Tell yeah. you to do. You just basically... But, you're, gonna, you're just going to be fetching things and going to the chemistry lab as played for acid. assistant. I have never played assistant because that would be smart and I would be able to learn things. Instead, <laughs> I have always jumped into roles blindly without knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> have you blown up any ships yourself? Uh, let me think. I don't think so, but I have, you know, I, I guess I'm technically an accomplice. So this, um... This other time, I, I decided I was going to play Cargo. And in Cargo, you have to, uh... Uh, when departments request uh, access to objects, you have to supply, basically. Uh oh stinky, Ooh, something's no. nulling. <laughs> Oh, no, no. That? <laughs> that, that's not a null that should affect gameplay, so. Uh, why can't I shoot? I assume uh, because something's nulling. Yeah, I, I just, I just the can't game's, shoot. The game still thinks you're in the. Uh, it still thought you were in the <laughs> uh, no shooty field. Oh, no. Something broke real hard in that last room. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Well, after this, you can send me the output log, and I'll at least look through that. I know I'm taking a hiatus, but... I'll look through it and send the glitches to who they concern. Yeah. Ow. Hello. Hello, projection. Okay. I see. It seems, it seems like it's basically it seems like it's holy mantle. God damn, this is so cursed. Well, it didn't protect you from damage, it so I think it's no. more like you get more damage until you get hit. <laughs> Fair and balanced. Something broke pretty badly. That was pretty fun though, I enjoyed that a lot. Alright. Send the output log to me now. Because <laughs> yeah, we're going to do gonna, another thing. I'll go and uh, shut so the game down. Forget. So yeah, I will. thank you for reminding me. Right. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. That was actually a really fun one. The unpredictable at start is was very fun. In fact, the next episode, I'll make sure to re-roll our paradox start to make sure we get a similarly interesting start. Or uh, something yeah, along and, those lines. Um, I'll probably continue these Space Station 13 mm. stories in the next one because I'm yeah, enjoying so. talking about it. I'm enjoying listening to it too. Um, I gotta say, I love, I love stuff like this where a game just, the game just goes so far beyond the game. Like the, 
it's it's more of a real life storytelling game than it is playing a game. I love those sort of things. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys in the next one where we will continue right off from where we left it. Bye bye.